I'm going to try these out today. Whoa. My wife said something about me looking old. And then she tried to cover with it looking distinguished. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but boy, <laughs> the word comes alive. <laughs> and you look rather good today. <laughs> Verse 9. Now, as Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man called Matthew sitting in tax office. And he said to him, follow me. And he rose and followed him. And it happened as he was reclining at, at table in the house, behold, many tax gatherers and sinners came and joined Jesus and his disciples at the table. And when the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciple, why does your teacher eat with the tax gatherers and the sinners? And when he heard this, he said, It is not those who are healthy that need a physician, but those who are ill. Go, but go and learn what this means. I desire compassion and not sacrifice. For I did not come to call the righteous, but the sinners. Now, Father, I pray that we would help be helped by your Holy Spirit contents, Father, that we might understand what a tremendous thing Matthew did in inviting his friends to come to Jesus. And I pray, Lord, that we might inspire to consider doing that ourselves. Lord, that you might just create in us a spark to see friends, family, co-workers, neighbors come to know you as Lord and Savior. To give them an opportunity to say yes to your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. The scripture says, As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man called Matthew sitting in a tax gatherer's booth, and he said to him, Follow me. And he got up and followed him. I, I want you to note how similar that calling was to all the other callings of the apostles that we've read about. He's walking by the Sea of Galilee and he sees a fisherman and he says, come and follow me. And they come and follow him. But this sounds just a little different. It sounds just a little more shady, <laughs> perhaps. It sounds just a little more, what is he doing? Right? I mean, this is Matthew. This is Levi. This is he who gathers taxes for Rome. This is a notorious sinner. I, th I think if you were to try to class sinners uh, in Jesus' day, uh, if you were one of the regular Jewish folks of that day, uh, you would have the prostitutes, and you would have uh, the adulterers, and you would have uh, all the folks who stayed too long at the liquor, and you would have all these different people that we would normally say are sinners, right? You would have this long list. But I, I'm telling you, if you were a good Jew, Jewish person in that day, at the very top of your list, the very bottom of all sinners, would be tax gatherers. Would be those who were pawns for the occupying Roman authority. Those who would levy a tax that was oftentimes exorbitant. Those who would tax people to death, sometimes, so to speak. They were the lowest of the low, right? I know you've made your list today too, right? Some of those same people were on that list. Where do IRS employees fit for you? <laughs> uh, you understand what I'm saying? Well, it was so much worse then. You know, folks today representing the government is representing what we usually consider a benevolent government. Folks representing the occupying government in that day was never considered by a good Jew as a benevolent government. They were the enemy. They were the, those who, who stood for what you stood against. They were those who uh, really were representing what you didn't like. Matthew is an Aramaic name for Levi. 
Uh, Levi, if you notice, harkens back to the, the tribe of Levi. You remember the tribe of Levi had a special place uh, in among the tribes uh, of Jacob. The tribe of Levi is where the priests came from. You see how far this Levi has fallen? <laughs> is gone from being of the priestly sect or the priestly tribe to being the bottom of the barrel a tax gatherer for the foreign occupying force Levi it is true that uh, in Mark's gospel Levi the son of Alphaeus is likely to be the brother of James the son of Alphaeus. I wonder when he was making out his guest list for his party, did he include his brother on the guest list? Come and meet this Jesus that called me out of my life into a brand new walk with him. Matthew gives up without hesitation, just like the other apostles gave up without hesitation their livelihood. But I want you to know the livelihood of a tax gatherer was a very lucrative livelihood. Because all that Roman required was that you collect the minimum level of taxes that they had decided for each Jewish family. And whatever you collected above that, because the Jewish families didn't know what the level was, so if it was five dollars, Kathy, you need to give me twenty. <laughs> uh, I have to send five on to Rome, but guess what I get to do with the fifteen that's left? Sounds like those televangelists, doesn't it? And <laughs> some of them. These were folks that people looked down on him. But I'm, I want you to understand from Matthew's viewpoint what he was giving up. He was giving up all kinds of money, position. He was giving up a lot. Jim Elliott, have you ever heard of Jim Elliott? A missionary who uh, went to South America in the late 50s. I love this statement that he makes. He is no fool who gives up what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. He is no fool who gives up what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. You heard about the guy who knew that he was going to pass away. The doctors had not given any hope for him, but he was a very rich man. And, and so he had his wife, made his wife promise that she would uh, cash in uh, their savings account and take all the money and put it in the attic right above his bed. Because he figured he was going to die sometime soon. And so he thought, I'll just grab it as I go by. Well, she did it. I mean, it was his dying wishes. So she's going to make sure she does everything she can. So she did it. She put it up above, in the attic above his bedroom and forgot about it. At the funeral and afterwards, some of their friends who had known about, you know, Facebook, you tell everything, <laughs> known about uh, his request, asked her, well, uh, what happened with the money? She said, oh, I didn't even think of that. I'm going to go see. And so she went up in the attic and there it was every bit of it. The friend said, well, I guess that didn't work. She said, well, I told him it wouldn't. I told him he should put it in the basement instead. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, we can't keep anything. We're going to have to give it all up. Why not give it all up now and follow Jesus? Why not give him control of everything now? and enjoy the freedom that that brings into our lives. Matthew gave it all up. You don't read any hesitation into his following Jesus. 
Oh, he might have heard of Jesus before. He might have been around some of the crowd when Jesus did some miracles or healing. But when Jesus made a specific call on his life, he didn't hesitate. He got right up and he followed after Jesus. Folks, I'm telling you, that's what we need to do. We need to get right up and we need to follow Jesus no matter what the cost. Because you can't gain what Jesus has for you until you're willing to give up what you can't keep anyway. Right? You just have to be willing to give it up. It doesn't mean that you won't have things. It just means that things won't have you. There's nothing wrong in having money. It's a love of money that's the root of evil. Right? Give it up. Give it up. Let God have it. And we go on to read in verse 9 and 10. Then it happened as Jesus was reclining in the house. Behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and were dining with Jesus and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why is your teacher eating with tax collectors and sinners? First thing that Matthew did when he met Jesus was to invite his friends to meet Jesus. You know who the most effective evangelists are nowadays? To our shame, the most effective people at sharing their faith are brand new Christians. Why? Because they remember what it was like not to have Jesus. Sometimes we older Christians, we get to thinking, yeah, yeah, I've, I've always been kind of good. <laughs> you know? Jesus is kind of lucky to have me. Because we forget what we were before we came to know Jesus. And we forget about the tremendous change that he made in our heart. As a 12-year-old boy, I knew my world was turned around. I knew uh, that I could dunk a basketball for the first time. Oh, no, Al, I really didn't think about it. I would have liked to try because I, I knew there was this tremendous weight of sin that was lifted off of me when I came to know Jesus. And you know what I wanted to do more than anything else is I wanted to tell other people <laughs> what had happened to me. Matthew did that. Right away, he gave a party for Jesus and the disciples and for all of his friends. Everyone he knew. And we look at the people that, that came to his party. First of all, they were the tax collectors, hated uh, because they represented Rome. They regularly defiled themselves by coming in contact with the Gentiles, Rome, Roman soldiers, other people like that. They were often dishonest because of the $20 thing that we talked about a few minutes ago. Uh, they often cheated people. Uh, they were not the kind of class of people that you would normally want to ha hang around but they were people who needed Jesus, right? I ask you, do you know of anybody in your life, anybody in your neighborhood, anybody at work where you work, anybody in your family, is there anybody in your life that needs to know Jesus? Would you raise your hand if you know of anybody that needs to know Jesus? Well, that pretty much says all of us, doesn't it? There's lots of people around us that don't know Jesus. Amen? Lots of people. I'm going to give you something to do about it here in a few minutes. Matthew did something about it. He invited the tax gatherers. And then it says he invited the sinners. In that day, there were two main classes of sinners, according to the Pharisees and scribes and priests. There were two main classes of sinners. First of all, there were those who were Jewish, but not as tied to the temple and the hundreds of laws that were manufactured by the ruling authorities, the Talmud. They didn't keep all those laws. Jesus and his disciples were included in that class. Remember how many times Jesus is criticized for not keeping some Sabbath law? Uh, they were considered by the ruling authorities, by the religious authorities, to be sinners. They were the people of the land, but not so concerned about the people of the church. 
Then there were those grievous sinners. There were those who were really, and really what this scripture is talking about, it wasn't Jesus and his disciples. It wasn't just the people of the land that they were talking about, but it was talking about those grievous sinners. Those who were criminals and drunkards and effeminate, uh, uh, who were rebels, who were imperfect. Y you know, people like us. I wonder what we'd be like in that day. <laughs> you know? Would we have been invited to Matthew's party and, and would this religious authorities look from the sidelines and say, look at those tax gatherers and those sinners. When you think about it, I think it could be very much like us. Really, those sin the sinners is a, a euphemism in Jewish circles for the morally suspect, such as publicans and prostitutes and uh, addicts and, you know, those people. 